In this video I'm going to do some fillet pointing. It is important to do this because you can get small gaps down the side of your property and what happens is when it rains it can actually go in there. If it freezes it can actually expand and crack. Not only that, if you get a gap where a lot of water is going down there constantly it can actually start to wash away the foundations. So it's a good idea to go around your property periodically and just check and where there are any gaps where water can run down it's a good idea to put in a fillet point of mortar. This is very easy to do and with a bit of practice you'll become really good at it. Before we do the fillet pointing we're going to have to clean the area thoroughly. So yesterday I actually power washed the whole area. We now need to thoroughly clean away any loose mortar. You can do that using a bolster chisel and a hammer. I'm now going to wire brush the area and I'm going to ensure that I get rid of any of the green algae or mould etc. Once the debris has been swept up it is then time to prime the area. This is done using SBR which is a special latex based priming liquid which is also used in the mortar mix. You should only do this on a dry day and preferably a day where the temperature will not drop below 5 degrees celsius. It is a good idea to wear some good quality knee pads or get something soft to kneel down on. I'm using a flux brush to do the priming as you do not want to get the SBR everywhere. To mix the mortar we're going to do a mix of 4 building sand to 1 cement. We're then going to add some fibres. These actually help to hold the mix together. So we're just going to sprinkle some of those into the mix. So I've got a clean bucket to mix it in there. We're only using a small amount so I don't need to use a cement mixer or get the mixer paddle out etc. So I'm going to use this to do the measuring. I'm going to put four of those in. And then I'm going to add one of cement. And what you can do if you've got a container with a lid is you can put the lid on. You can give that a really good shake. Once we've done that we can then add some fibres. Now these are difficult to measure and you don't need a massive amount of these. But these actually make the mortar bond together better. And stop it from breaking up. And the SBR makes it kind of waterproof and it also improves the flexibility of it. I mean these really do go a long way once you start mixing them in. So now we need to give this a really good mix.
Now we've got that mixed up like so, we can then start to add some SBR. So I'm going to start off by using the bit which I was using for doing the priming. I'll just add some more of that. What you don't want to do is add too much because you don't want your mixture too runny. If you want to, you can of course use a cement dye to dye the mortar a specific colour. This can be purchased as a powder and is simply added to the mortar during the mixing stage. And if you've ever used SBR mortar before, it is incredibly sticky. It just sticks to absolutely everything. So you can see that, that is now thoroughly mixed and as you can see it's got all the fibres in it etc and that will give us a really flexible and durable mix. It is important when you mix it that you don't put too much SBR in because you don't want it too runny. If you get it too runny it's very difficult to work with and it tends to go everywhere. If you want to speed up the mixing process, you can of course use a mixing paddle. To do the pointing, I'll be using this finger pointing trowel. You'll know when you've got this to the right consistency. What we're looking for is something that doesn't slump away from the finger pointing trowel. The last thing you want is something really runny that's not going to stick to the trowel because that makes it really difficult to work. You don't need to get a neat finish immediately, you can put the mortar in position and then smooth off a larger area. If you have never done this kind of job before, it's a good idea to practice on an area that is out of view, such as behind these wheelie bins. I've checked the weather forecast and there's a 1% chance of rain, which in Darwin means it's going to rain. 
So it's a good idea to cover the pointing up until the next day. In this example, there is a large gap between the driveway and the wall. When it rains, the water pours into the gap and drains onto my neighbour's property. Whenever you get a gap like this, you must fill it. Do not try to point over the top of it or water might get in and freeze, then break up all the pointing. Or worse still, it could move the wall even further, which eventually might need rebuilding. I'm filling this gap using the finger pointing trowel, ensuring that I press the mortar down so that there is no void. I'm filling the gap first, then we'll point the fillet afterwards. When applying the mortar, I normally press it against the side of the bucket, then scoop up some mortar on the end of the finger pointing trowel. Then push this into the gap. If you wanted to, you could just leave the mortar flush with the surface of the drive, but I like to add a fillet to ensure the water runs off. I hope you found this video useful, if you have, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already.